welcome to In Touch with Durham County. I'm Deborah Craig Ray, General Manager of Strategic Planning and Innovation. Joining me is our co-host, Wendy Jacobs, Chair of the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, Deborah. We use this program to share vital information about the wonderful programs and services provided by Durham County government. You may have heard about the Register of Deeds and wondered what goes on in that office. In Durham County, Sharon Davis is our elected Register of Deeds. She and J.T. Tabron will answer your questions about the role and services of this department. Kim Simpson, Durham County's Tax Administrator, is with us today to talk about a new tax service. It is called Gap Billing of Property Taxes for Unregistered Vehicles. Chair Jacobs, let's begin our conversation. Thank you, Deborah, and welcome Register of Deeds Davis, and welcome Mr. Tabron to, for you all to be with us today to tell us all about what's going on at the Register of Deeds. We, we appreciate you being with us. Um, so first of all, can you just give us a history of the Register of Deeds and everything that happens in that department? Well. Basically, we are one of the constitutional offices that started way, way back when the state of North Carolina was first formed. So that was in the 1700s. Yeah. And um, together with the sheriff, we've always had that place in the Constitution, and all of the activities in our office are guided by laws set up through the Constitution of North Carolina or by county ordinances. So we have been around for a long time. Well, that, that is really interesting. Um, I have no idea that, that it goes back to the 1700s and it's in the Constitution. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So what kind of um, services are provided? What kind of activities take place? within the Office of the Register of Deeds. We like to say that we're one of the gateways to county government because we deal with birth records, marriages, and deaths. So again, people say from the birth to the grave. But we also deal with uh, real estate documents. Whenever a house is purchased, uh, we get those documents in our office. When that house is sold, we get additional office. I mean, additional documents in our office. So we deal with all of those activities that a family would deal with over their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, wow. And I, I should also ask you, Sharon. You, uh, when were you first? How long have you been with the office of the Register of Deeds? And and when were you elected into this position? Because this is an elected position, which a lot of people may not realize. Yes, and you're right. right. It is yeah. an elected official, uh, position. And my son would probably tell you that I'm old as dirt because I've been there <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, I've been in the office for going on 29 years now. Uh, I started yeah. as a temp and uh, gained employment, and I've been there for a long time. That is a long time. And I was first elected well, I was appointed in June of uh, 2006, when, 16, when Willie Covington retired. And then I was elected in November of 2016. So I've been there just barely uh, two years now. Well, well, but more like three decades. And so you bring uh, a, lot of, a lot of experience We to like to call it institutional knowledge. Institutional. That's a yeah. good term. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a good term. Now yeah. give us a sense of how... Um, your office is organized or structured? Well, we basically have three parts in our office. We have the real estate section where we bring in the documents. Um, after things are processed in the real estate section, we have the indexing and verification section that looks at the documents to make sure we're, they're indexed correctly by the statutory requirements so when someone comes in, they can find the documents. And then we have the vital records section that deals with birth, deaths, and marriages. So if someone needed a copy of their birth certificate, they would come in. If they need a copy of the marriage license, and a death certificate, well, yeah, you can get a copy of it. With marriage license, we actually issue the license and then give you a copy of it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are our three sections. So basically those are public records. Everything in our office are public records except for medical information on a birth certificate. So every single thing. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So, um, you know, a lot of... Uh, 
offices. Um, people may think, you know, we're kind of in their own silos, but certainly your office does not operate in a vacuum. How are you connected to different departments in, in Durham County government? Can you tell maybe yeah. JT, can no. you talk uh -huh. about that? Absolutely. So as you said, we work with a lot of stakeholders within county government mm -hmm. to do the work that we do. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of work with the tax department, land records, and we also work with the city side of, of our sister municipal governance agency uh, and their land records department as well. Uh, another department that a lot of people know, don't know that we do work with is uh, Veterans Affairs. So uh, we'll probably speak to this a little bit later, but one of the documents that we file in the Register of Deeds Office are DD-214s. And so a lot of times we'll partner with Veterans Affairs to make sure that people have the records that they need to access the services and benefits that are available to them. So you have a lot of different uh, people coming in who, who need help and departments who need need what you have. And what about our connection with the greater, you know, the state and, and national level? Are, is there a state association that you're a part of? Yes, we have the North Carolina Association of Register of Deeds. And I must admit, um, when I first started in the office, we weren't able to attend. But um, when Willie came in, he allowed us to start going to the conferences and conventions. And um, we did that both on the local level and the state. So with the state register, the, the end card as we call it, we have um, a legislative conference once a year and an annual conference once a year. And um, the upper staff will attend those and then we have um, workshops that uh, we will send, you know, the regular employees to so that they can get, you know, and re re maintain some, get some additional knowledge on the stuff that we do. And on the national level, we do have an organization called IGO, the International Association of Government Officials. And I must, you know, admit that I am currently the delegation director for the state of North Carolina wow. for IGO. Wow. And I forgot to mention that I was just elected as historian of NCART this past year. So I am now, <laughs> so, yeah, so now I'm in yeah. the chairs as they call it. Right. So I start out a historian and eventually in a couple of years I'll be president of the yeah. association. So we are, we are well connected at the state and national level it sounds Yes like. we are. Well yeah. congratulations uh -huh. on Thank that. Thank you. That's yeah. very exciting yeah. that you have um, invested that much time and done such great work that your peers feel like you will be great as a leader. Well, and part of it comes from being exposed to it. You know, we were able to go to the meetings, we were able to go to the conferences, so the registers, and they know me and they know what I'm, I think they know what I'm capable of doing and I'm glad that they uh, put their trust in me to, offer, you know, to vote me in as an officer. Excellent. So what are some key points of the new assumed name law? I know every now and then the legislature will throw some new things out there for you all to do. Yes, so <laughs> I'll, take, I'll, I'll take this one. I'll take this one. Um, well, with regards to its actual implementation, last year uh, the way that the statute read was that after December 1st, all prior all assumed name documents and filings that were filed prior to December 1st, 2017 will ultimately expire in December 20, on December 1st, 2022. So there's that five year gap. Previously, the documents did not expire. However, with regards to this new change, those documents will be expiring after that five year window. So what we are encouraging people to do with regards to the law is to come in and refile an assumed name if you have previously filed one any of the post-December 1st, 2017 filings will no longer expire. So that new filing will benefit citizens for giving them an extended run as far as their assumed name goes, it won't, won't expire. Uh, an additional change to the law is that previously assumed names were only good for the counties in which they were recorded in or that you were going to be doing business in. So if somebody lived in, say, Wake County, but they wanted to conduct business in Durham County, they would come to Durham County and file their paperwork here. There wasn't sort of a reciprocal type of situation. The way that the statute reads now and the way that the documents are created is that individuals can register their businesses in all 100 counties at once. Wow. So that's a great benefit mm -hmm. to citizens. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, all of the documentation is no longer housed in individual Register of Deeds offices. The paperwork will be housed in 
a single register of deeds office, but then it will be uploaded to the Secretary of State's office. And that will allow anybody who is searching for an assumed business name, regardless of where it's been filed in the state, will be able to access that information. And that's beneficial with regards to making sure that people are aware of which business actually did work. And a lot of times when individuals want to, uh, if they're having a, a legal dispute mm -hmm. with, a, mm -hmm. with a company or an organization, they will have a lot greater ease in finding that information as opposed to having to scour the records across the state. They can go straight to the Secretary of State's office and gra gather that information. So those are some of the benefits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's yeah. great. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So how far back do your records go? I know when your office was established, but Durham County kind of existed in a period. So how far back do your records go? Durham was formed in 1881, mm -hmm. so we have records back to 1881 in our office in the real estate books. Um, and as everybody knows, we were part of Orange County mm -hmm. and uh, Wake County. Right. And then in 1911, I believe, an additional part of Wake County came in. So if someone's doing genealogy research, mm -hmm. If they're trying to go back before um, 1881, we would uh, direct them either to Orange or Wake County because that's where they would find that. But we do have deeds back to that date. And then on the vital records side, we have marriages back to that date. Mm -hmm. And then um, death certificates, we only started doing those in, I think it was 1909 or 1913, and currently though, we have, um, you know, of course we have all of the marriage, birth, deaths, we have all of those. And you can also get a copy of a birth record from any place in the state of North Carolina after 1972. So that's one of those additional services we provide by, uh, you know, able to log on to the state and get that mm -hmm. record for our mm -hmm. citizens. Of course, it's going to cost a little bit more, yeah. but yeah. it's a service that we mm -hmm. can provide. You don't have to go all the way across the state to get it. Okay. Okay. Right. Efficient. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like people are coming in to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, records, family searches, genealogy, and then you also do have some uh, services in Spanish, is that right? We have two Spanish speakers in the office who can interpret for us on either side of the office. And that's mainly because all of our employees, well, the majority of our employees are cross-trained. They can work at any of the additional stations. But the Spanish speakers have been trained mm -hmm. to work both parts so that they can answer those questions when someone comes in. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, we have had just a wonderful conversation. You guys do so much more than I think we thought about. And uh, we're just really excited that you were able to join us. We're about out of time. Is there a place that people can go to get additional information about your office? Yes, of course, we're on the county's website, you know, which can be found at www.dconc.gov and under Department's Register of Deeds. Um, if you go to that link, it's a link for public record search if you wanted to look at the real estate documents. And then if you wanted to order a copy of your birth record without coming in, you can click on that online records request and follow those instructions to get a copy of your records. But we do have strict ID requirements. So we're going to ask you to upload a copy of your birth record before we just send a copy back out to you. Excellent. But yes, we are on the county's website. Great. great. Well, again, we thank you so much for what you do every day to serve our citizens. And I don't feel like all we did, we just kind of scratched the surface. So okay. we're going to have to have them back yes. to talk some more about the great work that you do. Oh, we'll yeah. come back. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, we yeah. like to talk about what we do, and mainly because we like what we do. And if we didn't like it, we probably wouldn't be there. Well, look, like I said, almost 30 years. And JT's been around for a little while. He left and came back. and uh, <laughs> Couldn't stay away. Yeah. So Couldn't we're hoping that we'll be able to keep him. Yeah. Well, thank you. Because <laughs> as service. you said, it said, it is one of the county departments that citizens do uh, interact with and interface with on a regular basis. So thank you for all the work that you do. And we want to thank you for having us today. I've enjoyed it. Good.
All right, well, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we'll talk about a new tax law affecting, a new tax, rather, affecting unregistered motor vehicles. Stay with us. Testing. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Welcome back. Kim Simpson, our tax administrator, joins us to share information about a new tax billing process that has been recently implemented affecting unregistered vehicles. Commissioner Jacobs, let's continue our show. Thank you, Deborah, and thank you, Kim, for being with us here today to tell us about this new tax. <laughs> and uh, can you, first of all, what is this, uh, this gap billing of property taxes for unregistered vehicles? This is not something I've heard about, and probably most people in the community don't, don't know anything about this. So we've had taxes on unregistered vehicles for years, but the difference here has to do with when we go to renew our tag with the uh, North Carolina State DMV office, um, we register our vehicles. And what this tax is, is basically if you allow what we call a gap to occur between the time your registration ends and the time your registration is to be renewed, and let's just say you're late a couple of months, there's a gap there's a gap between that registration time period and you're liable for a, a tax. Mm -hmm. And that's where it gets its name as gap billing. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay the taxes for the time period the vehicle was unregistered. Mm. So, so first of all, okay, so if you can just explain, I, I thought that when you did that and you, did, you, know, you didn't renew right away, you, you paid some kind of a fine or fee anyway. So can you explain how this is different and um, you know, what would cause someone to get notified that they have, have this, this you know, how is it going to work? So if I have renewed my tag and say my tag is to be renewed in January and I decide to, for whatever reason, not renew my tag on time mm -hmm. and I don't renew until March. Right. Um, so from January to March, there was no, registra no registered vehicle at that time. Mm -hmm. So that's the gap. Okay. okay, so now we have these several months that taxes are due for, mm -hmm. um, and so because it's not included in the registration of those two months. So when I go renew in March, basically what happens, I get a renewal from March to mm -hmm. January, mm -hmm. unless the DMV office happens to change my renewal month. Mm -hmm. And because you're not paying taxes on um, as an unregistered vehicle the same time you're paying for a registered vehicle. Okay. Okay. And so if you're late, yes, you do have a penalty that's assessed. But by, that's for the registration. That's for the registration okay. being late. Mm -hmm. But what can happen is your registration month can be changed for a variety of reasons. Uh, if you're late, um, sometimes the DMV office may decide to change that registration time period. Um, or your vehicle may have not been drivable for that time period. So you would prove that I didn't drive my vehicle, it's been in the shop. Whatever the reason for that would be is the DM, excuse me, DMV would decide at that time period whether they changed your registration period. Um, so the way to avoid the gap is not to be late on your registration and to renew timely mm -hmm. because that's what creates this gap. Okay. And so during that time period that it's in the gap, it's considered unregistered and it's taxable by North Carolina state law. And we have to bill for those difference, the, the gap difference mm -hmm. months, what I call it. Mm -hmm. And so that can be anywhere from one to whatever number of months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you have not been doing this, so this is something new. And how will you go, I mean, how will you make this happen? I mean, how... What would cause somebody to, to get this? So legislation yeah. was enacted in 2017 to sort of say, okay, tax assessors, you have a responsibility to, to take the, the, the duty forward and bill for those gap months. And so we begin to receive a file on a monthly basis that tells us those individuals who had the gap. Mm. And then we will bill monthly for those. Mm. And that's typically around 500 a month that we may have. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how common is it for these gaps to occur? 
It's not that common. There's mm -hmm. about three percent of our um, registrations that it occurs with, um, so it's not that common. But we have, you know, about five hundred a month that can be billed for the time period that that gap existed. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you start sending out the notices? Because I know you've already begun. February the 9th was the first gap billing that we mailed, and those, that gap billing covered uh, everything was from July 17 of 2017, mm -hmm. which is when we were told as to how you, you have a requirement to do this through December of 2017, and then we're doing one each month after that. So about 3,100 folks got the bills February the 9th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Can you give us some perspective versus how many overall vehicle registrations we have? And do you anticipate that this will change over time with this process or that it's going to be regularly, you expect this many? I would like to not have any, okay? <laughs> um, however, there, there are cir circumstances that, right. you know, a gap can occur. Mm -hmm. um, so we have about 197,000 vehicles we bill for annually. Um, you know, in conjunction with the North Carolina Department of Motor Vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, 500 a month is not that huge. I would like to see it less. Um, so the idea is folks don't need to be late on their registrations mm -hmm. right. uh, to avoid the gap because, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's some penalty for having a gap and some collection enforcement measures that can happen okay. as a result if you don't pay it. So could you tell us a little bit about um, about those penalties so that people can be aware of that? So there's a couple of things that's really important. One is the appeal period. Mm -hmm. So the appeal period must be done 30 days from the due date. The due date in North Carolina is September the 1st for unregistered vehicles. So you have 30 days from that date to appeal. Um, it's due by January the 5th to avoid any interest, which is 2% or 3 quarters percent each month thereafter. If they fail to pay, then the tax collector has the authority by statute to garnish wages, attach your bank account. Mm -hmm. um, the so typical. The typical mm -hmm. enforcement mm -hmm. measures mm -hmm. for unpaid property taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why doesn't DMV collect this tax? I mean, I thought that was the whole purpose of us going to the, you know, the single Tagging billing. Tax. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the law, the, the rules are clear that the DMV is collecting the tax on the current registration. So the current registration is from the renewal month that you get, you know, if you're timely, to the mm -hmm. for 12 months. So in, in this case, because it was unregistered, they don't collect the unregistered amount. And the statutes are pretty clear that's up to the assessor to do. Okay. So that's that's the difference. Registered and unregistered. So registered is always with the state uh, DMV process under the tax and tag, yeah. and the unregistered is directly through the tax assessor's office. Mm -hmm. So what is the date for which the value is determined? It's January the 1st mm -hmm. when we calculate the bill. Okay. So um, if I calculate the bill in February, then all those 3100s value was based on what the vehicle was worth on January the 1st mm -hmm. of 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, if, um, if, a, if a citizen wants to uh, appeal um, this, what, what is the process for them to appeal? So it's really important for them to show us um, any documentation that they may have that they did not have a gap. Because it's possible that the file that DMV sent us, uh, we have had some citizens who were actually out of state. Mm -hmm. So they were in state, then they left out of state. When they came back into state, got the registration, it looked like that their tag had not been renewed in the state of North Carolina. It created a gap. If they can prove to us that it was registered in another state, then of course, you know, we would remove the gap billing because in essence, that's sort of double taxation right. on the same yeah. asset. Right. So it's really important for them to appeal 30 days from the due date. So that means that they should have the appeals to us 30 days from that due date, which was September the 1st. And they can appeal the value beside us. Um, you know, sometimes we understand that the vehicle was uh, registered in the city of Durham, and maybe it wasn't in the city of Durham. Maybe it was in, um, you know, outside the city limits. So all those um, things can be appealed. Yeah. But it's really important for uh, citizens to communicate with us when they get that bill. Mm -hmm. 
We know that there is um, some concern about, you know, why I got this bill because I renewed my tag. Mm -hmm. And in some situations when you didn't, we don't know why, we just know that it has occurred that when you went to renew your tag, the DMV agent could have changed your registration month um, if you were a month behind. Mm -hmm. And they're, in essence, trying to do good customer service to help you just get 12 months, but it creates that gap. Yeah. And um, so that that one month, you might mm -hmm. get a bill for one month, mm -hmm. um, but we have some that receive the bill for 40 months. Wow. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is no limitation yeah. on the number of months right. that it, the gap occurred. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that we are having this conversation because this is something new and that we really need to educate uh, the community about. Um, where are there? Do you have any other ideas about how we're going to get the word out to people about this new tax and it's the process? The process. I think the biggest thing is making sure people understand that when they renew their tag, they're paying for 12 months mm -hmm. of a current registration. And for any time period that vehicle is not registered with the state of North Carolina, then they have to list it with our office so that they can pay property taxes as an unregistered vehicle. And this gap billing is sort of given us information from the state yeah. to show us that they did not renew their tag and therefore they're responsible for that one month or however many months that it is. Mm -hmm. It's important to renew your tag on time. Um, that's a yeah. state law. So um, to me, that's the biggest thing is if you're not renewing your tag, you're breaking state law. Yeah. Well, again, we thank you so much for bringing this to our attention and us beginning to get information out about it. And we certainly will work with you to continue to share this information over the next year or so to get people used to it. Right. And hopefully we'll get them off that list. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? We've got about a minute left. No, the only thing I would say is that um, know that our Property tax appraisers are out in the field. They've been out in the field for a couple of years preparing for the 2019 reappraisal. All right. And they should have ID with them, right? They'll have ID, they'll have a vest on, and they'll have identification on their vehicle that they are a Durham County employee. Well, thank you so much, and we appreciate all you do for us. And um, without Kim, we couldn't do a whole lot of other things because no, she's couldn't. getting the money in the well, door. That's right. You're the one who makes it happen, Kim. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, thank you for all that you do. We know that you are. Uh, we are one of the highest um, achieving tax districts in the state, thanks to you. So thank, thank you for you. all of your hard staff work and really your staff hard. as yeah, well. Staff works thank really you. Hard. Yeah. Well, okay. we've had another great show. Yes, we have. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we will um, take a look to find some important things that are going on in county government, and we invite you to join us again for the next issue of In Touch with Durham County. Cheers. <laughs>